we've been talking about suffering and the problem of it, and all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good, bad things happen to good-looking people, what's going on? I'm wondering if it could be possibly, just possibly, more multidimensional, if there's actually some other aspects going on that as they became included would begin to make some sense of it. And I'm not going to say what they are, I'm just going to make some inquiries. For instance, if we included confusion, like what if it was, and that was there? Was, is there a way that that could be there with everything else? And if so, what would that mean? What would that do? In some ways, it seems like um, the whole issue of distinction, you could say, is God or is spirit in dialogue with itself, massaging itself. In real, and the, the only way for that to happen was for that to happen. But then the minute that happened, suffering. So for me, when we look at getting rid of suffering, there's a deep suffering <laughs> and a horror, and I kind of gasp, at what cost? Like, what if spirit was so all-powerful? It's like, yeah, you want to stop the suffering? Fine. And, but then we didn't have any fulfillment. We have no fullness. We only have freedom. You get bored of that, and then we go back to this fulfillment thing, and then you get to suffering. And at the same time, you have to do something about it. Because if you do nothing about the suffering, nothing happens. There's no more fulfillment. And at the same time, if you get rid of it, nothing happens. One of the things that took me the longest to begin to really appreciate is that suffering is a noble truth. Suffering is a holy truth. And that um, there's lots of ways you can look at it. And these are very simplistic, but you could say suffering is the fuel that when ignited is the propulsion and the trajectory of evolution. We have to touch it, we have to ignite it. You could even just say that that flame is the luminosity of clarity once we're, we're there with it like that. It's an inherent mark of existence in the finite realm. Yeah, right. It's holy. Right. And, and, it's, we, and we need to heal it and cure it because if you're hungry and you haven't eaten for five days, we actually want to eat. And through that process, there's the suffering line. Because it's not that then no suffering right but the suffering actually evolves. So it's constantly being dealt with in the same way that every other line is being dealt with. And it gets more and more exquisite as fulfillment gets more and more exquisite while always remaining there as, as part of the process. Suffering is sort of the leading edge of where you're, where you're growing too. Right. Just very briefly, I want to say, I think that's really wonderful. And I don't want to get lost on this, but I, it's just a personal mom, moment that might not have a whole lot of meaning to, to too many people. but. Um, I actually started, I wrote a book called Sex, Ecology, Spirituality, which is, it, it's this great doorstop and you can put it in your truck in the winter and it's really great traction. So it has at least two uses. And there's a follow-up to it that I, we, we haven't decided what to call it, so we just call it Volume 2 so often. I'm actually trying to talk Random House and letting me title it Volume 2. <clears throat> so Volume 2, Volume 2 would be the, that was titled. And the way it started was, I was using the four quadrants, and I was just noticing that there's a karma in all, all the four quadrants. And it, I just became fascinated with these other conditions like you're talking about. And so I actually was, it was, the book was about the karmas in all these different quadrants. Every I has a karma, but it has a karma, and it has its own cause and mm -hmm. effect. And we has a karma. That's what's so interesting. Every time we get together, a certain history starts forming. And when we get together again, that, that pr all the prior we's are there. All the things that we've done and said to each other are these background karmas that come together in a we. So I ended up writing, of course, this 1,400-page book on, the, on these four karmas. And decided, okay, this is getting out of control. So I do what I usually do, which is divide it three parts, in volume one, volume two, volume three. And I've lost track of how many volumes it is. But it started on exactly that kind of thing. I don't want to say any more than that. It verges on meaninglessness. But it, that's how the, the whole second volume got started, actually, was kind of thinking about right. it. Yeah. And I don't mean to say that there is no, in some aspects, no cessation of suffering either. Yeah. I just mean to say that we don't want to be too absolut absolutistic with that. Yeah. Right. Paradox and here is a big deal in this whole conversation. Paradox here is a big deal. Paradox in this whole conversation is like well, a infinite big deal. and finite are both. Right. The, that's these two right. truths we're talking right. about. Can't get stuck on either side. And a great paradox, which I think is by Rilke, I want to source it. I would love it if I had said it, so I'm going to. <laughs> but um, he said, God writes straight by writing crooked. That works. And it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting to, to phrase it in that way. You are listening to 
www.integralnaked.com.